Do you have a caveman in your family tree? Stone Age Britain may seem rather remote if you can only trace your family tree back a handful of generations. But statistically, the chances are that the inhabitants of Stone Age Britain are the ancestors, one way or another, of you and of everyone else in the whole world many, many times over. I'm Anthony Adolf, a professional genealogist with a particular interest in the ancient past, and I'd like to take you back on a journey through time in search of our ancient ancestors in Stone Age Britain. The first humans evolved in Africa about two and a half million years ago, out of earlier, much more ape-like ancestors. That was during the Ice Age, when most of the world's water was locked up in ice, so sea levels were far lower than they are now. And instead of the English Channel, Britain was connected to the continent by dry land. This meant that some early humans were able to roam up into southern Britain, and remains have been found in East Anglia that go back almost a million years. Those first humans belonged to a species called Homo erectus. By about 400,000 years ago, they had evolved into a new species known as Homo heidelbergensis. And we know that some of them came here to Swanscombe on the north coast of Kent. Two skull fragments from one of them, who was nicknamed Swanscombe Man, but actually turned out to be a woman, were found here in 1935 and 1936. And then, 20 years later, they found a third skull fragment, which amazingly fitted into the other two, and helped us to quite literally piece together the story of our ancestral past. Now, besides skulls, those early humans left behind tools, like this one, which was found less than a mile away from here. It's a simple hand axe of a type termed Clactonian, and it was made by bashing away the side of a flint pebble. And it was probably used by the Swanscombe people to knock out the brains of the animals that they were hunting. In slightly later levels of the excavations in Swanscombe, they found much more finely shaped flint hand axes, like the one that's commemorated here in this enormous sculpture at the entrance to the Swanscombe site. And here is a flint hand axe from that same period which was found in Norfolk. You can just imagine our ancient ancestors using this to butcher the prey that they'd caught on the icy steppes of Britain. Descendants of those intrepid hunters evolved into a new species, Neanderthals. One of the places where we know they used to live was here on Oldbury Hill near Sevenoaks in Kent. And this is one of the rock shelters where our Neanderthal ancestors used to make their camp. They would shelter under these rocky overhangs and gaze out across the frozen wastelands of Kent on the lookout for their next meal. They made their tools just like their ancestors had done by keeping a large flint core like this, which was found only a few miles to the north of here, and then striking off shards of flint like this, which they then retouched and sharpened to make tools. Amongst the animals that the Neanderthals ate were mammoths. Now this is part of a mammoth tusk. And this is a mammoth tooth. And you can see the way it was designed to grind down all the moss and the tough vegetation that grew on the tundra. And it gives you some idea of how enormous mammoths really were. Our Neanderthal ancestors either hunted and killed mammoths, or, more likely, they simply scavenged meat from their already dead carcasses. They also hunted creatures like woolly rhinoceroses and reindeer, and also wild horses, like that one just over there. About 200,000 years ago, far away in Africa, other descendants of Homo heidelbergensis evolved into our direct ancestors, Homo sapiens. Then, about 55,000 years ago, some of those Homo sapiens reached the Middle East. 
and before they spread out to colonise the rest of the globe, they interbred with their distant Neanderthal cousins, who were probably descendants of the people of Swanscombe and Oldbury Hill. Traces of that Neanderthal DNA remain in Asian and European people to this very day, and they're easily detectable through simple genetic tests. Now that interbreeding took place far to the south of Britain, but during the period which we call the Upper Paleolithic, which lasted from about 42,000 to 10,000 years ago, there were short periods when the ice relented just enough to allow the descendants, who were homo sapiens with just a little hint of Neanderthal blood, to come roaming back north into Britain. Some rare evidence of early Homo sapiens occupation of Britain comes from the Paviland Cave on the Gower Peninsula in South Wales. The cave is inaccessible, but it's over that headland just there. In fact, the cliffs along here are peppered with caves, and in the Paviland Cave in 1823, they found the body of a young man who was about my height, who died between 29 and 34,000 years ago. His body had been ritually decapitated and he was covered with red ochre. He was wearing a mammoth ivory bracelet and he had a mammoth skull at the head of his grave. And that ritual element is definite evidence that our Ice Age ancestors had become as fully intelligent and self-conscious as we are now. The young man from Paviland belonged to a Stone Age culture termed Aurignacian and it's possible to find remains from that period elsewhere in Britain as well. We're on Oldbury Hill near Sevenoaks again, and these are some Aurignacian tools, which were found not far from here in the flinty fields of northwest Kent. They're about 30,000 years old, and they were struck off a larger flint core, and then shaped into scrapers and burins which our ancestors used to prepare skins in order to make clothes to keep them warm. As time passed, stone tool making technology improved and in the cultural phase known as the Gravettian, which lasted from about 28 to 22,000 years ago, our ancestors made tools that were smaller and finer than ever before, like this pointed scraper, which was also found near here. But finds like this in Britain are unusual, because for most of the Upper Paleolithic, it was simply too cold for anyone to live in Britain. So they lived further south, in places like France and Spain. This is another flint scraper. This was found far to the south of here, near Bergerac in France, where the weather was just a little less bitter. It was down in the caves of France and Spain that our Ice Age ancestors created beautiful art, such as these images of mammoths from Rufignac Cave in the Dordogne, and prints of their own hands, perhaps arranged in family groups, and pictures of strange, shamanistic beings who seem half animal and half human. Their location must be significant because our ancestors usually made their camps in the cave mouths and they made their paintings and engravings deep in the bowels of the caves themselves. It all suggests that those deep caves and the animals depicted in them were held in a special reverence by our ancestors, even though they were often also creatures that they hunted for food. But although most Ice Age art exists elsewhere, the occasional spells when the weather allowed people to roam up into southern Britain did result in some traces of creativity here as well. There's Cresswell Crags in Derbyshire where they left behind some engravings on the walls of different animals. And there's Cheddar Gorge in Somerset where there's a sort of half picture of a mammoth. And here at Cathole Cave on the Gower Peninsula in South Wales where they found a stylized picture of a reindeer engraved on the cave wall which is about 13 and a half thousand years old. And, as with all Ice Age art, it's further evidence that our ancestors' minds were just as sophisticated then as ours are now. That full consciousness had developed just in order to help us to survive. 
But it was during the Ice Age that it went further than it had ever gone before. And we became the first creatures on Earth ever to truly contemplate who we are and where we come from. And it's from that that all our interest in religion and history and art and archaeology and the science of the Big Bang and even our own family trees ultimately stems. About 11,500 years ago, the Ice Age ended and people could return to live in Britain for good. It was the Mesolithic period when our ancestors were still hunter-gatherers, but life was actually very hard for them because they had to hunt in the woods that were growing up everywhere across the tundra because of the end of the Ice Age. And it wasn't very easy. The flint tools that they made at that time were ever smaller and finer. And one of the places where we know they made those tools was here in Birch Wood near Cuxton, which is above the River Medway, not far from Rochester, in Kent. In 2011, some flint flakes were found here, and archaeologists came and dug this great pit behind me. And in it, they found literally thousands and thousands of flint flakes and flint tools, which were made right here by our Mesolithic ancestors. These are some of the flint flakes that you can still find here today. This tiny bladelet was found here. Archaeologists call it a lunate microlith, and a row of these would have been fastened into a wooden shaft using animal glue to make a saw. As you can see, it's been meticulously shaped, and it's still sharp today, some 8,000 years after it was created. Many new waves of migrants were destined to come to Britain, but they all ended up interbreeding with the native inhabitants, making all those generations of Mesolithic toolmakers and the earlier Homo sapiens and Neanderthals and Homo heidelbergensis and Homo erectus, direct ancestors of us all. There's this part of the story that I've told in my book, In Search of Our Ancient Ancestors, From the Big Bang to Modern Britain in Science and Myth, which is published by Pen and Sword and available in all good bookshops and on Amazon. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching this short film and that you will enjoy reading In Search of Our Ancient Ancestors.